Hey guys and gals, today you are in for a treat. Um, there has been quite a few people I've noticed um, that can't figure out how to change the screen resolution in Kali Linux. If they're trying to use a, uh, a remote desktop or a VNC viewer to try to access Kali remotely, um, there have been some issues where it doesn't quite detect the screen resolution correctly. And this is especially the case if you are using a, a small LCD screen connected to your Raspberry Pi, uh, whether it's a 3.5 inch or a 7 inch, um, it might not detect that screen resolution or give you that resolution that you need uh, when you're trying to access Kali remotely because it's going to be detecting that resolution from that uh, LCD screen that you have attached to the Raspberry Pi. I believe the screen resolution for the uh, 3.5 inch LCD is actually 480 by 320 and if you're trying to access that remotely that resolution is a little small especially if you have a 1920 by 1080 monitor and it'll be a little difficult to navigate around uh, because the screen size will be so small and you'll have to move the windows around and it's just it's really hard to work with but like I said you are in for a treat today because I'm gonna show you how you can go about fixing that so you should already have your Raspberry Pi set up to where you can access it remotely if not uh, check out one of my other videos that will show you exactly how you can do that um, so we will run VNC viewer to connect All right, so I will first show you what the screen resolution looks like with a 3.5 inch attached LCD monitor. As you can see, the resolution, which is pretty small on a large monitor. Um, so, like I said, it'll be hard to maneuver and there's not a whole lot of room to do anything. So you'll find that it is a little difficult to use uh, certain applications with a small resolution. Um, but I'm going to switch this back over to a larger resolution and then we can continue and I'll show you how to change that. Alright, now here we are with a 1920 by 1080 screen resolution, which is a huge difference, obviously. Alright, so to give you an idea how the Raspberry Pi works, um, it is actually uh, an embedded platform, so it doesn't have a BIOS like most conventional computers have. Instead of having system configuration parameters edited in the BIOS, the Raspberry Pi uses a text file named config.txt. Uh, this file is read by the GPU before the ARM CPU and Linux are actually initialized. Uh, so this file must be located on the first boot partition of the SD card. Now I've actually seen that quite a few people have been searching for the config.txt file. Uh, from my experience, uh, this config.txt file uh, actually has to be created because you can't actually access it uh, within the file system itself. Alright, so let's get down to business here. Uh, first, uh, let's just open up a terminal session. And we want to navigate to root first. And these are all the folders located in root. And the first thing that we want to do is create another folder, um, which I already have created. And I named it FAT32. Um, this folder is arbitrary, so you can name it whatever you would like, um, but for the purposes of this video, it is FAT32. So we can go ahead and just uh, create that directory by typing mkdir space forward slash FAT32 and press enter. I already have the directory, so I am not going to complete that. And then after you have the directory uh, created, you will see it there. 
after you use the ls command again. Alright, so the Raspberry Pi Kali download, if you downloaded that ISO from uh, Kali.org, um, it actually consists of two different partitions, and we will go ahead and mount one of those partitions first, because that's one of the first steps that we have to do in order to get this resolution configured. And I can go ahead and show you the... Uh, location these are the two partitions one and two when we want to mount that first one here so to do that I'm just gonna clear the screen and just type in mount space forward slash DEV forward slash MMCBLK zero P one. Then add another space and FAT thirty two. All right, so we have it mounted. Now we can go back and check our FAT thirty two file. Now, first, we will navigate to it. And then as soon as you mount that, it should automatically create all these files. So these files should all be in there, um, except for the config file. That you have to create. Now it's already here for me because I've already created it. So your next step would be to create that file. So we can go ahead and use nano to create that. And your screen doesn't look like this because I, I added all this. So right now you should have a blank file. And this is basically just the default configuration. And there are quite a few different configuration options that you can actually include in this file. Um, I will most likely include all of that on my website or I'll provide a link somewhere else. That'll show you exactly what all the configuration options are. Uh, like I said, this is just a default. So it doesn't include... Uh, a whole lot just to your uh, the main necessities really but the main thing that we're going to look at here is the frame buffer width and the frame buffer height that basically is used to set the width and height of your screen resolution and as you can see mine is already set to 1920 by 1080 um, you can set that to whatever width and height that you need for your monitor and then after you have all this information in the config.txt file, you can go ahead and save by holding down control, hitting X, and then it'll uh, ask you if you want to save. You click the Y button for yes, and then enter to exit, and then the file is saved right there. If you just press LS, again, you should be able to see that file. Uh, so now that that's finished, um, I'll just navigate my way back to root and clear the screen. And then after that's finished, we want to unmount that partition. And to do that, it's just U mount space forward slash fat32. And that will unmount that partition. And that's pretty much it. And then we can reboot the system. And then as soon as it boots up, it should boot up in the resolution that you specified in that config.txt file. So if you want to reboot the system, just uh, type in reboot, hit the enter key, and let it do its thing. And when it reboots, you should have a nice size screen. And I'll tell you what, it's a lot easier working with uh, a screen like this compared to a resolution of 640 by 480. Um, it's just very difficult to get around, and the screen is just way too small. So I hope this video has helped you. Um, feel free to like the video or even comment on it if you do have any questions. And maybe even subscribe, you know. Um, I plan on posting videos as frequently as I can regarding a lot of different topics. 
um, in computerized technology world that we're in these days. There's just so much to learn, and I'd like to spread that knowledge.